Welcome to the class Structure Excavation. This is part of the KYTC Structure Inspection Level 1 class. This is the second part of the Geotechnical Investigation video. This video will cover Standard Specification 603, going over excavation, foundation preparation, and backfill. Different types of structure excavation. We've got solid rock, which is that it is solid rock. Anything that has to be hoe rammed or removed by blasting on a bridge, mainly hoe ramming. But it can't be removed by just normal means of with a track hoe or a dozer just by scraping. Common excavation is anything other than that. That is anything that can be removed with a track hoe or a dozer. Unclassified is we're lumping it all together. We haven't done any geotech or we don't aren't real sure. So we're just saying it's unclassified, contractor bid accordingly. You need to remove this material. So let's look. How much structure excavation is needed for the Nelson County Bridge shown on the next slide? So let's look at the title sheet. The title sheet gives us quantities for the job. If you look, structure excavation is found here with common and solid rock. We have quantities at Pier 1 and Pier 2, none in Inbent 1 and 2. If you look at the bottom it gives you the totals. You have 245 cubic yards of excavation common and 37 cubic yards of solid rock. Note there isn't any in indent 1 and 2 because indents are built on a fill so there is no excavation. For more information on that you can refer back to our bridge component video. So what are the pay limits for excavation? That's what the contractor wants. They want to know what am I getting paid. As you saw before, we pay excavation in cubic yards. Uh, the limit is 18 inches outside the neat limits of the footing for both common and solid rock. So you look at your footing dimensions from the plans. If it's a 10 by 10 footing, we give them an additional 18 inches for this work. This is their for form work to get room to get in to build their forms. Uh, it does not include laying back slopes for OSHA regulations or anything else. If the contractor over excavates, all we're paying is the 18 inches. There are some special considerations in solid rock. We'll talk about that later. A little preview that is for scour. So, all right, let's do a little problem. How do you calculate structure excavation solid rock? So a couple things you're going to need first. You're going to need the top of rock elevation. This is gotten with surveying before you start excavation. And then we need to know the bottom of the footer. That's what they need to excavate too. That comes off your plans. And then we need to know what the footer dimension is. And also, if they're a scour note saying we don't give them the 18 inches. So let's say for this example, we don't have a scour note. The dimensions of our footer are 10 by 10. So we're giving them the additional 18 inches. So that's a foot and a half all the way around, which since there's two sides, that's an additional three foot to our dimension. So now from a 10 by 10 footer is now 13 by 13. And our depth is 15 feet. You're not going to have just a depth given. You will have a depth at each corner of the footer, and you just average those to get the average depth. So if you multiply that together, you get 13 times 13 times 15 equals 2,535 cubic feet. We want it in cubic yards, so we got to divide by 27. That gives us 94 cubic yards of solid rock excavation. So coffer dams. This is a contractor is having to build the footer in an area below the floodplain or in an instance they're building it in a lake or a river. And they've got to get down to get the footer built without letting water in. They will have to submit plans for a coffer dam. Those come to our office, the Central Office Division of Construction. We will review them. Uh, there is a review time, so make sure they come in in a timely manner. And especially if there's outside approvals needed, we need a lot of lead time for a railroad or utility company. This could be a pay item, or more than likely, it's going to be incidental to structure excavation common or foundation prep. Temporary shoring is another thing that is maybe needed, especially if you're doing rehabs or building next to an existing roadway or a railroad. Uh, these need to come in with lead time as well, because if, if you got the railroad involved, it's going to take a lengthy review. Um, there are OSHA concerns. We need to make sure they've been designed properly. At the top picture, you see a temporary shoring with a uh, steel sheet piling, and then below you got H piles with timber lagging. This is not usually a pay item. It, it could be, but typically it's uh, incidental to 
structure excavation common or foundation prep. So foundation preparation. It is a lump sum item. In the past it's only been used on culverts. More and more we're going to start using that on bridges uh, in lieu of structure excavation common because you can see there's a lot of things here that are incidental. Contractors they're saying if it's in incidental they want a lump sum item. So we're listening to the contracting industry and going to start including foundation preparation on more bridge jobs. So if you see that as an item, it includes coffer dams, shoring, dewatering, common excavation, and backfill. All of those are included and incidental to the bid item foundation preparation. So footing excavation. So we've got down the footing. We need to make sure it's excavated full width and length of the footing. Your job as the inspector is to go down there and measure it. Uh, once they say they've gotten to solid rock, they're to the bottom of the footer. They need to percussion drill it with a five foot drill bit. This is to make sure we are in good, durable material. We don't want to be in a seam and then hit a void. Uh, it's got to be clean. Make sure they've cleaned it before we place concrete. So you might get the thing, hey, we've hit good rock. It's five foot higher than what we thought. Can we raise the footing? All sounds good, but due to scour, we're going to want to review that. Our immediate answer is going to be no, but if we are certain we're on good rock, call a division of construction. We'll get together with Geotech. We'll come down to your job site and review it and see if we need to go further or we can raise the footing. But scour is the erosion of the stream bed or bank material around due to flowing water. This is not a state bridge. I think this is a residential bridge we've had, but we want to make sure we don't get bridges that are just sitting on nothing. So I've mentioned scour. If you have a scour note in your bridge plans, it could be on the pier or it could be in your general notes. But if it's there, we don't give them 18 inches on the structure excavation solid rock. You still give it to them on common, but not solid rock. What we're telling the contractor is you want to cast concrete against the rock. We don't want any issue for water getting down in there and eroding that out because of backfill material. So don't over excavate. Make sure we've got to the minimum neat limits designed in the plans, but we want it cast again. Any over excavation or any extra concrete is incidental to uh, that bid item for class A concrete. So culverts. Culverts need to be on a uniform bearing surface. This could be yielding, which means on soil. We don't build bridges on soil, but we could build a culvert. Or unyielding, which is on rock. So you might say, well, we dug down and it says it's unyielding, got to be on rock. What do we do? Because we didn't hit rock yet. Well, if you get to that case, look for this note in your plans. It's going to tell you to excavate all the way to solid rock and then backfill with a non-erodible material that meets the requirements of section 805. So backfill at abutments, walls, and culverts. This is, is critical. I know you've heard a bump at the end of the bridge. We don't want it. We know it's going to happen. We're trying to limit it. Part of doing that is, is the backfill must be free of any frozen material, any vegetation or debris that could erode and weather away down into a void, or any rocks that are greater than four inches in any direction. It's got to have adequate drainage. That's why a lot of times we don't backfill with soil. We backfill with rock to make sure we have that drainage. But if we are backfilling with soil, it's got to have the proper compaction. Make sure you know what your proctor is, your optimal moisture, and you're getting density readings every foot of backfill. So weep holes are critical to give us that adequate drainage. Uh, this is detailed in section 610 and 613 uh, for bridges. On a wall, cast in place walls, which an abutment is considered a cast in place wall. These are every eight foot. On culverts, they're every 25 feet. Uh, they're six inches from the bottom of the footing. And they allow, and they must have a fabric wrap drain on the back side. That drain is to make sure soil doesn't come through and clog or rocks come through and clog the weep hole. So backfill at bridge invents is critical. We want to make sure that we are getting it backfilled correctly to limit the amount of settlement in the backfill. Design memo mentioned here states that the standard drawings in sepias 09 and 10 uh, reference that as well as special provision 69 which will be in your plan in your proposal and sepia 9 and 10 will be in the plans. So let's look at sepia 10. A couple of things are critical here. This is for the construction of an embankment for a bridge in bent. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it but let's just look at a few of the notes here. So let's first look at note three. 
Note three says you've got to have a four inch perforated under drain pipe wrapped with geotextile fabric for draining the excavated trench and structure granular backfill. So this pipe is shown right here. It goes f along the full width of the indent and actually wraps around. You don't want to wrap that pipe around and let it drain into the soil backfill because you could supersaturate that and create a greater failure plane. You want to wrap it all the way around the structure into the rock for slope protection that is on the front side right here. All right, so our next note we're looking at is note 12. Uh, that's placing geotextile fabric prior to placing structural backfill. That is this area right here. And you can see I'm highlighting this. That must have fabric all the way around it and working as you backfill this backfill. Now let's talk about that backfill. So this backfill is the critical zone. We've got to make sure it gets installed correctly. It's a two foot max lift. I would say make it go in uh, one foot or great less, but we've got to make sure, no, it's one foot and you've got to make sure it's getting compacted. One of my tips is just paint the back wall of the indent every foot. That way, you know, as you're installing material, it can't go in greater than a foot. Make sure it gets compacted. You're not going to get compaction on rock, but the vibration will consolidate the rock to help it fit into its final position. And it must have structured granular backfill. This is a select gradation material that meets specification. Uh, check the gradation requirement. Usually you'll see contractor using twos, 23s, down to 57s. So here's what structured granular backfill looks like, but we have a problem here. Remember I said it's got to have fabric all the way around. Where is the fabric? The contractor here is going to have to dig out that rock, put fabric back in, see where the pipe is, and build it as per the sepia. So let's move on into removing the existing structure. Similar to excavation, but it's not in the bridge specifications. It's in the roadway specification. It's in section 203. Uh, make sure you're following that. It is a lump sum payment. We put in one removed structure per bridge. So if you got five bridges on a job, there's five removed structure items. Uh, when you're removing that, that concrete can be allowed in the embankment as long as there's no protruding reinforcement. There's no fragments greater than one foot in any dimension, and they cannot be within two foot of the subgrade. If you're questioning what a subgrade, refer to our grade and drain class. We go into depth of what the subgrade is. That is the top two foot of the embankment. And make sure you're following section 206.03.02. Sometimes the existing structure remains and we've got to protect it, whether it's there for uh, pedestrian traffic, whether it's there for a park or what it may be, we've got to protect it. This instance here, this bridge was limited to 15 tons and the concrete producer wanted to drive their concrete trucks around to get to the end bent on the other side, but they were wanting to do it with fully loaded trucks. So the inspector wanted to protect the structure and had to park his truck on the other end to make sure the concrete trucks went around on the detour route to get around to the other side. That is it for this presentation on structure excavation. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you and I hope to see you in class one day.